you can see here, this is what those key segments are. So I'm not going to go through um, all of them, but what we can see here is the youth and the millennials, um, you know, they are a really key component of this segment. And when we actually talk about our marketing campaigns, um, they have been um, some of the areas that actually have been um, the most connected with and, and responsive and connected into what we're doing. So um, our approach in terms of our marketing campaign, Georgie, do you want to flip it? Um, has really been to illustrate the benefits of city um, resident lifestyle. So if you look at this, um, sort of little wheel at the bottom, you can see that all of these channels, um, so whether they're digital, partner channels, direct, print or, out, or outdoor, they're all actually feeding back into the City of Adelaide's website. Um, and these are the components of the campaign, which I'll flip over to the next slide to show you um, a little bit more clearly. So you, so you can see we've got um, digital advertising as part of this. We've had case studies, which obviously is shared on our website, but also through digital campaign as well. We've had our City Living um, magazine um, and then our social media posts. Um, I'm going to just show you a really um, short clip of one of those um, uh, videos, just so that you can see what this actually looks like. Georgie, could you just show it? It's only 30 seconds or even less. So, um, thanks, George. If we go back to the presentation, um, so this this is just one of our short. Oops, wrong, Sorry. wrong one. That's right. We'll get it back. So this is one of our short, um, thirty second clips. Um, you might have, if you're watching the pageant, you might have seen one of those actually um, on the TV um, while you're watching that as part of our support package for the pageant. What I think is really good to understand is the connection that we have had um, through these case studies and videos is very quite is quite significant. So, um, with our videos, we've had over well actually just under eighty thousand people watching our videos and all the way through, not just clicking on it and moving on. So there is quite a lot of interest in these. Um, I'll, I'll flick over to the next one because. That's our digital campaign, but we've also had outdoor campaign. And there's some examples here around um, what we've had on bus shelters, um, the railway station, our tram wrap, um, billboards, and the billboards are very much when people are entering into the city. Um, and a lot of the messaging around those are actually, you know, come and live in the city, enjoy more downtime. Don't don't spend time travelling. Very much about that lifestyle and, and the opportunities that you have um, by living in the city to minimise that travel time that most people would be experiencing. So in terms of... Um, what that has meant, though, um, is that it's very clear that we can see what the um, you know the digital metrics and the target that target audience that we're hitting. What's really more difficult to see is how does that translate into people actually making a decision to move into the city or to buy in the city. Um, so we can track growth over time, but to be able to have that nexus between this is what we've done in a, in a, in a marketing campaign and this is how many people live in the city is quite difficult. And, you know, it's a long process in terms of, say, buying um, and living in the city. Um, there's a time lag between, say, watching something, that, that idea of living in the city or confirming that you're already interested in that and then actually making the decision to move into the city. And it's very difficult to track, um, you know, what has been the reason, the individual reason to, for people to make that decision. And because that, that time lags really things like 
um, you know, what is the person's purchasing power at that time? It might also be, have they got their deposit ready if they're buying? Um, if they're thinking um, of a renting in the city, are they currently locked into a rental contract and they'll move at the end of that? So that's just important to understand that uh, while we have a marketing campaign and we've got really significant interest um, and really great results from that, it's it's quite tricky to track, uh, you know, I've watched that. I've watched that case study, and now I'm doing a search on, um, you know, realestate.com. We've looked at whether we can get that data, but basically the cost of accessing that is um, over $100,000 a year, $120,000. So it's actually well over what we're actually even spending on our marketing um, campaign. So because of that, um, it's not what we would recommend um, in terms of how we would measure the success of the campaigns. So um, in terms of how we do measure it, you can see here that um, we have a lot of metrics in relation to um, who is viewing, uh, when they're viewing, and certainly there's a lot of complexity, and I'm certainly not an expert in it, um, of how you use your social media to target the very specific targets uh, and market segments that we have been talking about. So what we do know is that the people in that millennials bracket or just shy of it, so 25 to 34 year olds, um, have been the largest website um, audience, so over 12,000 um, users to date. Um, part of that is because they're one of our target uh, audiences in terms of our digital spend, but also there's been quite a significant interest in those case studies. Um, we also know that millennials um, have been the most um, engaged both in terms of our social media and our YouTube um, clips. So again, this is probably um, partly because of our proportion of our spend, but also the uh, you know the consumption habits of of millennials actually is like you know is, is very much suited for that type of consumption. Um, interestingly, the millennials case studies, which you can access on our website, we can provide um, links to that, um, have had very high engagement. And um, perhaps slightly surprisingly, um, mostly young men in terms of uh, millennials have accounted for the majority of clicks um, into those neighbour city neighbourhoods ads. So you've got some examples just on the right of that screen there um, where, where we've got some of the um, social media um, that has been sponsored. So if we go to the next slide, I've really sort of spoken to this um, already, but this just shows our February-March campaign um, results, so just sort of pre-COVID. Um, uh, um, and very clearly you can see in that graph that that sort of 25 to 34-year-old um, has the you know most significant page views, um, and we had almost you know fifty thousand um, users to our to our website for that as well. Georgine, so um, that's sort of a, a really I guess high level overview of what our marketing campaign has been. Um, and if you are, you recall the question um, that we posed to you around that was. Uh, would you like us to continue doing, you know, what we're doing, but with um, more of a focus on millennials or continuing that focus on millennials? Um, the second part was about new ideas. Um, and what have we heard from the millennials that we have spoken to? So the Lord Mayor held a millennial forum um, in June, um, and that was a partnership with Solstice Media, and we tapped into their 40 Under 40 um, awards. Um, and importantly, we asked them three sort of key questions um, and then I've got there, you know, a summary of what the responses to those questions were. I'm not going to read them out. You can, I'm sure you've probably already done that. But I just will pull out a few things. So the first question was, what are the essential priorities to ensure that the city and the state can remain a, cre a creative and livable hub for the future? So some of the things that we heard were that creating, you know, a unique visitor experience, um, transport options, uh, involving employers, universities and future leaders in, you know, city development um, strategies. Um, also, again, affordable housing initiatives. So I've, I've just highlighted the ones that um, are speaking to some of the initiatives um, that we're talking through um, or that you've heard previously before, such as our social affordable housing um, policy that we're developing. 
Um, if we go to the second question, the second question was really in the light of COVID because we're right, you know, at the at the heart of that at that time. We just were coming out um, of some of our very significant distancing um, requirements. Um, and so the question was, given COVID, what are your biggest industry challenges and opportunities? Um, and the things that we heard back were is that business can be done anywhere. Um, you know, this can be both a bit of positive um, or possibly a negative for the city. So why do we want people to live in the city and do their business here? Um, about embracing local opportunities and technology, and then very much about using technology for global audiences. So um, they were the opportunities. In terms of the challenges, it was really around redefining consumer behaviour, mental health, that type of thing as well. If we go to question three, um, we asked them, you know, how, how could they support the City of Adelaide to achieve um, our vision of becoming the world's most creative and livable city? And it was really, um, really great to hear um, that a lot of, um, at, you know, that, that cohort said, well, actually, they could see themselves as being role models and actually take what they, they said was, you know, take a step up and, you know, fill, fill that space. Um, to work collaboratively um, with government, to be involved in partnerships and, and collaborations. And it's really the answers that we heard from these three sort of key questions was, um, you know, recognising that there's significant value um, to the City of Adelaide and to state government to be able to tap in um, to this audience to seek their input into our future city living campaign planning and, you know, our strategies as well. So. One of those first questions in terms of new new initiatives that we're putting to you um, is, are you interested in creating an under 40 city um, living reference group? So it's not necessarily about the 40 under 40s. It, it may be them, but it may be um, obviously um, others as well. So, um, you know, we could invite those alumni, but also other targeted millennials to form a city living um, reference group and really to tap into their knowledge, um, their insights, brainstorm or ideas with them, but also um, test the approach in terms of what our campaign is, what other projects and initiatives might be. Conceptually, we're thinking, you know, maybe two or three times a year um, and, and then test perhaps some of the other initiatives we've got uh, in this presentation with them. And, you know, obviously we can do that within our existing resources. So, so one of the other ideas um, was a try before you buy with a millennial focus. So we have previously had this type of concept come um, through council um, in the chamber, but without a millennial focus. Um, and, you know, this would be a, you know, a significant um project and it would need you know careful consideration and you know planning and all the risk assessment and all of that type of thing and we bring it back to council but the idea about this is um you know and we could test this idea with the reference group as well um, and about developing partnerships with developers perhaps apartment owners um and bringing in a single or a couple to um, come in live in a city free of charge for a limited time as an introduction to city living. So this is something else for council to um, consider. Is it something that you're interested in? Um, another version of that, which perhaps is more targeted um, and slightly different, um, is this idea of a graduate retention strategy. So doing that via a graduate internship with a subsidised housing package. Um, and this is really, um, you know, a concept that we could investigo, investigate, um, scope up more fully to come back to council. But, you know, how can we retain, you know, our university graduates, particularly in our new growth set, growth industries and sectors like AI, cyber, space and defence, to actually not just, you know, uh, work in the city, whether it's at lot 14 or, or other um, premises, but actually to live in the city as well. So this would very much be about a partnership approach. We'd need to involve government, university, you know, industry partners to think about what the career um, and housing pathways might be for some of those high-performing um, graduates to um, 
you know, think about whether it be a scholarships or internships with city businesses um, and how um, we might provide some subsidised um, or free rental for, say, a 12-month period. Um, some of the things we've thought about is how we might partner, say, with um, developers in terms of are there any sort of sites that are um, more challenging for other outcomes, so adaptive reuse in perhaps some of our um, strategically located vacant buildings. You know, what are some of the ideas that we could do and test and trial that perhaps could be almost like a pilot for for other work to be doing, for other similar types of initiatives to occur. So, as I've said, this is really conceptual, just to flag, flag it as an idea and see if you're interested. Um, you know, we're thinking the budget might be around $100,000 per year, but we would bring anything like this, obviously, more fully formed back into council. Um, the next one um, is the rate rebate. And um, obviously, this is important um, in terms of being an attractive incentive for low to moderate um, income groups, perhaps who are price sensitive. Um, Council, obviously, you asked us in October to come back uh, with um, a framework in relation to um, rate rebates for targeted key workers. Um, and we think that there is a real um, opportunity or an overlap here between those key workers that might be in health and educational professionals, um, emergency service workers, et cetera, who may also be millennials. So that, that sort of same age group uh, working in those sectors as well. So um, at the moment, we're just looking um, around that definition of key workers. Um, and we're bringing a separate report back to council, but this is really just to, to flag that this, this um, policy piece really fits into responding to the um, millennials demographic as well. Um, and so really that is it. Hopefully it was covered everything, um, and, but was short and sharp enough for you. And over to you for questions. Yes, very short. Sure. Good. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Um, members, over to you. Hands. Um, uh, thank you, Greg. You were first up. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, look, I, I would, of course, respectfully defer to um, uh, those of our fellow elected members who are millennials uh, and subjectively living the dream. Um, uh, but I, I and uh, I did a little sample last week. I, I had dinner with a group of expat, uh, Adelaide born expatriate Sydney um, millennials who have come back uh, to Adelaide to wait out the COVID crisis. And um, what uh, they are all saying, and they said that all of their friends from Sydney, ex-Adelaide, who've, who've returned and working remotely, uh, um, and I realise there's a total danger in, in you know, the, the sample, the subjective sample of, of one dinner conversation, um, but um, it's that they can have their cake and eat it too, that the gloss of, of the, the, the mega city um, uh, is short-lived, and once you pair up, um, the opportunity to live in the city, but also to uh, realistically aspire to have a place down the coast or a place in the country. And I know we're talking, I'm talking about middle class, you know, university educated uh, people. Um, we, we uh, I, I think for those those of us who are, who are older, just should avoid the trap of only um, being willing to see the world through through our own lens. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. Um, Franz. I have a few questions of, of something I suppose that I would like the uh, uh, administration to look through, and that is, I mean, we talk about millennials, but if we talk about it too specifically, um, you, uh, if we're focusing only on them, uh, then we create a, a, a bubble. Uh, and uh, that bubble is that uh, they come in a particular age and, and they, they move through our city uh, as, a, as a cohort. 
And I think we need to be a little bit more careful, A, across the variety of demographics that we're talking about, because what the businesses require is a little bit different to what we're talking about, specifically targeting a residence group. So for the healthy, for the health of the city, the questions will be um, what sort of accommodation, and millennials also have children, and I didn't see any references to that, because those families have a greater need for for infrastructure and costs and, and uh, you know, business activities, et cetera, uh, and social activities. And they are, you know, if they're excluded from here, obviously they won't be back in the city uh, for any other purpose because of the, the way they structure life. So millennials, uh, you know, with families is critically important. Uh, does our infrastructure, so we've, got, we've talked all about what millennials like, does our infrastructure uh, um, support them and what infrastructure in other words businesses again activities uh, and things like that uh, do we uh, do we have do we have enough of them so that we are giving them a lifestyle and also the all the services etc that they expect and, and like uh, to make their the experience here a complete one um, and uh, uh, so uh, just to, to attract again the, the family aspect and all the rest of it to see uh, are we accommodating those, um, you know? And and again, as I as I did impress about the businesses now and the and the broad of, uh, broad, breadth of demographics that they're uh, servicing, uh, you know, versus uh, because they need that diversity of of uh, a consumer um, uh, through this process. Are we able to still ensure that we are keeping the city attractive across the greater spectrum? Because I mean, we have that younger co cohort, which is obviously. Uh, comes to the city because it is it is a place that is dynamic, but predominantly in the um, so uh, in the you know service sector and the food service sector where they would come in. Uh, are we looking at those uh, as the daytime economies that uh, we have uh, you know uh, some you know the sort of people there that require those as well? So to question that, um, and yeah, and that's that's the main ones. So it's just that we, I think we're, we're doing it a little bit too narrow. And in 10 years' time, as these people move out, we won't have a, a, a breadth of um, you know, uh, residents that supports a good, healthy uh, city centre. And we may be doing ourselves a disservice if we're not being more cautious of who we're trying to attract. Excellent. Thank you, Franz. Uh, Arman, over to you. Oh, sorry. No, Sandy, you're next. Thank you. Um, in terms of the, uh, the questions, um, I think an under 40 livings, living reference group might be all right, if, as long as it doesn't become too formal and that's quite broad in terms of uh, who, who and how we might bring that together. Um, and uh, would be a very short-lived thing if if it's sort of not a um, if it's something that can just be brought together as we did with the 40 under 40, it might have more value um, because a lot of what is being said is being repeated at each of the youth forums. Uh, there was another one on Friday that was an outcome of the. Um, Committee for Adelaide forum that they did, uh, and saying much the same thing. Um, the trial before you buy, um, and you probably remember Priscilla brought something through along those lines uh, last term, so um, which was just to encourage people to come into the city, and I think we could have a bit of fun with that one. Um, it's also something that I think we could try with a lot of the new businesses that are setting up in Lot 14. So connecting it to the entrepreneur sort of uh, groups that are coming in there. Um, I do like the graduate retention strategy, and I think that's something that we should work with uh, corporates, businesses across the city. Um, and I know the universities are really keen to do something along those lines. Um, and just for the final one, the re rebates, I think, is a much broader one. I get that you're trying to sort of say that there's some crossover, but of course, if we do a rate rebates, um, I would be trying to do it in a very broad sense for affordable key workers as opposed to a demographic. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Over to you, Arman. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a quick question, Michelle. First of all, thank you for the presentation and all the information. Um, 
so I guess what's next from here? Does this work lead into a strategy or a policy? Um, you can hear me? Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was muted, sorry. Um, yeah, so through um, the Deputy Lord Mayor as Chair, um, so certainly um, we we run the, the marketing campaigns twice a year, mm -hmm. um, normally sort of spring and autumn. This year we haven't run the second one because of COVID, so we would be looking at running another one um, again in that sort of um, post Christmas time. Um, so I guess the, the the answer, the question we're asking is, you know, at the moment we do target those three groups, um, and the reason we target those three groups is because the research has shown they are the most uh, likely with have the attitudes of wanting to live in the city. Um, and the predisposition, but also the incomes that are appropriate to be able to live in in the city as well. So that would that at the moment is um, something that does happen as part of the annual budget process. So uh, we could tweak that depending on what elected members' feedback is. Do you want a greater focus on millennials or, or keep our I suppose our options open so that uh, we're not focusing on one at the expense of say um, business migrants or empty nesters. Um, in terms of the the four others, um, the rate rebates, um, absolutely, as the Lord Mayor has indicated, um, we were, we're not looking at focusing on the demographic graphic, but just acknowledging that the it's millennials are part of, there. yeah, that's right, there is a crossover, they're, they're part of those key workers um, as well. So we that would be part of our social and affordable um, uh, housing uh, policy work, so that's where that one would fit into policy, um, and then into and I would expect the under forty um, city living reference group would really where we're testing different types of policy. So uh, we wouldn't have necessary policy or approach around them, but we use that type of um, consultative approach to be able to get different perspectives and and, and views and perhaps administration might have before we bring that into council. Uh, the other two around, you know, try before you buy and the graduate retention strategy, they are they would be new pieces um, of investigation um, that don't necessarily really fit at the moment within anything specific. However, I would I would see that they would come under that residential growth strategy and just be a, a, an element or a, com a component of it, but would need to sit within that broader um, uh, strategy for the city. Yeah. Okay, so so in terms of this um, residential growth action plan, 2018 to 2020, uh, that, that was the reason why I asked, so what, what happens from, uh, uh, from, from here on? And I guess if, um, uh, if, if I could summarise it from, from my perspective, um, uh, very briefly and very quickly, I, I can sort of see a, a population strategy as, a, as an overall strategy, um, like a five-year or a ten-year strategy with a number of um, uh, action plans uh, associated with it. And I guess these questions here that you're asking about the, um, uh, the under-40 city living reference group, the rate rebates, graduate retention and all those sorts of things, they can either be action plans themselves or uh, the results of these um, uh, items and options can result in, in the action plans that sit underneath the population set strategy. And I guess, and this is this is only my observation and my perspective, I see the action plans in some cases overlapping, uh, but I guess it, we should probably have a um, uh, a longer term uh, view on this. So if we want to try and uh, first of all, attract the millennials, uh, but also to retain them, um, there should be a, a you know a five year or a ten year strategy in place. Um, uh, also, while while we're on this under forty city uh, living reference group, I think that's probably a, a good thing for us to link to the uh, the economic development agency that uh, that we're looking at. And the reason I say that is because. Yeah. Um, Monday to Friday, you've got your, um, uh, I guess, you know, workers and, and visitors that come into the city and they um, uh, they support the daytime uh, economy. But what about the nighttime economy? So when these visitors 
uh, go home at uh, uh, you know 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. What happens after that? So we need to think about the the nighttime economy, and I think the uh, the focus on the um, uh, on the residents and um, I guess encouraging them to to support the businesses during the night time that would be um, uh, something that we can probably look at. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned in one of the slides was um, potential partnerships. And one of the potential partnerships was uh, with the state government. So the state government, um, uh, I don't know whether if they actually have a population strategy in place, but they've initiated their own version of the 40 under 40, which they've essentially called Force 40. Uh, and uh, it's, um, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same sort of concept. They've, they've gotten 40 people under 40 uh, together statewide. Uh, and they're trying to, uh, I guess, you know, brainstorm some ideas about the identity of uh, of South Australia. So we could probably um, uh, tap into that. Uh, there was also a mention of um, partnership with universities. Um, I don't know whether if this is something that uh, that's worthwhile exploring, but I, I see the universities being a part of that uh, uh, under 40 city living reference group. Maybe they can uh, give us some some insights or some information that we might not necessarily have. So. Um, that's uh, that's it for the time being um, from me. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Alman. Uh, were there any other hands? I could, uh, Councillor Moran, and then Councillor Kuros. And I, I can't actually see you, Phil, so I'm not sure if your hand's up or not. This hand isn't up. Um, I'm a little bit surprised to see Priscilla's try before you buy uh, on the activities. Priscilla moved that. She couldn't get a seconder, and it was universally panned. Um, so could you remove that? Even Priscilla has moved out of the city now and agreed after that that it was the silliest idea she'd ever had. Um, how we, I'm not going to explain, if anybody would like, think it's a good idea, they could explain it, how a landlord's going to let you live free, um, or a person selling it's going to let you into their house to live there before you buy it, um, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't say this often, but I completely agree with Franz. Um, targeting what is the biggest group that live and work in the city, the millennials, to get more millennials is both ageist and uh, financially stupid. Um, I think we should get more people into the city. This is not a social experiment that the council's anywhere near clever enough to do. I don't know why this keeps coming up. To waste so much time in this meeting talking about this that we've talked about over and over again is, I think, criminal. We're just about to get into a second stage of pandemic and we're wasting our time with, with rubbish like this. So could we just finish it off and get on to the next item? Thanks, I had Councillor Kuros next. Um, thanks, Chair. I was actually going to ask what is try before you buy. I hadn't really um, know what that was, but it's explained to me, so I will move on from that. Um, I'm actually um, along the lines of saying that I, I understand that we need to attract uh, or, or make it um, attractive for a cross sector of a lot of people to come into the city and that's what we want and that's what we want it's the balance and I'm a little bit skeptical about concentrating too much on one sector um, I think that we need to have a, a broader uh, viewpoint in regards to attracting people to our city although yes because you put a lot of work into this I just want to answer some of the quick key questions yes absolutely continue engaging with, you know, under 40 um, city living reference groups. Um, we need to have constantly hear, hear from these types of groups. Absolutely, we should be working with universities and, and other Sorry. sectors in, in regards to work, but we just can't focus on just one sector. And I don't know whether this report is just about how we're going to do this or whether we're broadening the, um, uh, the um, you know, population growth. And the one thing that really does scare me about the future is um, jobs. And jobs is what's going to bring people into the city and by the looks of what's happening in our economy. Um, we need to be attracting businesses to want to be set up in the city to then attract workers to want to come and live and work in the city. So um, 
I'm, I'm just don't know if this report is just meant to centre just this for now or whether it's about a broader context. Does, did that question need answering? Comes well, I, um, if I want to, but that's just my thoughts at the moment. Okay. So, so uh, maybe I would just answer that why we have brought this back in. So the, the, the reason we brought this in with a focus on millennials is because um, we were asked to bring this back in with a focus on a millennial. So the, the resolution of council was as part of ongoing residential and economic growth strategies, the city of Adelaide targets millennials to live and work in the city by uh, looking at the market research, I'm paraphrasing, looking at the market research, um, engaging with them and bringing a report back to recommend progress work based on existing news. So that's, so I just wanted to say, that's why we focused on millennials. Um, we will, of course, look at um, all, all, all sectors um, and age groups within the city in terms of working and living in the city. So. OK, members, were there any further questions or comments? Um, I might just make a, a very quick comment. Well, Councillor Moran, I am like the only millennial in this chamber, so I'll just make a very quick comment. Oh, sorry, you sneak in there, Arman. Arman sneaks in there. Um, but uh, uh, Bill had his hand up, um, Chair. Oh, I couldn't see it. Uh, you out a bit, Phil? No, no. Well, I'm always on the. Oh, I don't mean one, but I'm always on the other. Um, uh, look, can I can I just uh, make the observation that this is uh, rather typical of this council? We have spent weeks and months debating and then creating an Adelaide Economic Develop Development Agency uh, um, whose task was to execute the higher level policy of the council, which would no longer be required to develop the individual actions to promote business growth and residential growth in the city. And here we are talking about all of these actions Including actually, so, sorry, Councillor Martin. Sorry, sorry, Councillor Martin. That actually isn't correct. Uh, the development of the policy actually still lies with the council. That's 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 the way it was set up. Um, well, and and in, in particular, in particular, in particular, Councillor, in particular, we didn't actually give them uh, the ability to devise policy regarding residential growth. In fact, we had a discussion at it at council, and everyone was quite clear that residential growth would not actually sit with them. It was something worth having a discussion about, but that's what was um, decided. I, I take your point, but do you have any comments to make on the presentation that we received? Uh, no, and just one final comment. I, I agree with Councillor Turos. We need to be concerned about jobs, and one of the best ways is to stop killing jobs in the city of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen, I didn't see your hand up, so I'll chuck over to you. Thanks, Chair. Very briefly, just to respond to the questions, um, I appreciate that this has come up because of a motion of council. Um, in terms of question one, um, I think the approach of the stratification of the marketing makes a lot of sense in terms of identifying those key areas of growth and then targeting specific marketing to those areas. So with millennials and students, those categories, I think it does make sense to um, stratify the approaches toward that, not necessarily any more so, but um, acknowledging that it's one of the key areas of growth and so therefore proportionally, um, as I think does occur at the moment. In terms of the new activities, um, don't really have an opinion about the reference group. The try before you buy, if that works in any way, um, maybe anecdotally, and I don't have anything, any research to back this up, but uh, it would seem as though some of the barriers might be uh, developing a bond and getting approval from a landlord and the length of time that's required. So I don't know that if the trial before you buy was to progress, um, whether there would need to be, because I presume the idea would be for the City of Adelaide to subsidise the, the cost. So rather than us subsidising the full cost, it could simply be that looking at systems whereby we were removing some of the barriers around um, bonds and length of times would be a sufficient way to approach those uh, those barriers. Um, graduate retention strategy, a lot of sense. That's it. 
Great, thank you, Helen. Um, yeah, just very quickly, thank you, Michelle. Um, first up on the ads, I get those ads, um, and I already live here, so they're half right, I guess. Um, perhaps the targeting could be a little bit more accurate. Um, uh, the reference group, much of a muchness, yeah, go for it, so long as it doesn't cost anything. Um, uh, try before you buy. I appreciate the scepticism, um, very much so. Although I do wonder, it seems that there are high vacancy rates of accommodation here in the city, and I'm talking about I'm talking about living accommodation, um, and potentially uh, there could be more. What you're basically saying is like renew Adelaide for for a people, sort of. Um, so there actually may be people who are willing to do it if you did some of the things that Helen suggested, but also said. Uh, we won't. Uh, we'll give you back a rate rebate for a quarter or something like that, or for as long as the people are there, or something like that. Um, there actually may be more desire to do that because I think there will be some places that are empty for some time to come. And if people can try and cost recover um, with limited risk, they may be open to doing that. Um, graduate retention, yes. Uh, rates rebate. Um, I know I know it's already been touched on absolutely not you couldn't you couldn't offer a rate rebate based on age that would be discriminatory but I appreciate this crossover um, uh, in it but you know it's sort of a chicken chicken and egg thing if you if you make it a nice place to live and you have activity um, then people will come and live here anyway so if you get everything else in the strategic plan right um, this will take care of itself um, I, I can tell you as a millennial who lives and sometimes works in the city um it is actually a great place to live and perhaps it is just a case of marketing you need to tell people that because you couldn't for me at my age i couldn't have this lifestyle and quality of life if i lived in sydney melbourne or brisbane and i just wouldn't live in perth so um it i think i think i think you just need to you need to tell people and you need to be marketing it a little bit better i appreciate there's a lot of detail there uh, but i actually think there's a lot more that can be done at the same time um just in that sense so uh that's all thank you were there any further points members okay if not we'll move on to the final item tonight which i'll need a confidentiality order for uh, so we'll move to 5-1, exclusion of the public to considering confidence. 6-1, uh, a place of courage.